true, and I'm proud to be. Um, as John Ager just said, John Ager is also my landlord at Hickory Nut Gap Farm, but my <laughs> husband is Walker Sides, and he has been the farm manager at Hickory Nut Gap for the past five, going on six years. <laughs> okay, um, so thank you so much for being or for having me here today. I'm really honored to be included in this powerful group of speakers and um, movers and shakers in our community. So thank you for having me. Um, as Ian said, my name is Cameron Farlow, and I am the land access coordinator for a newly developed program called WNC Farm Link. Um, and my job today is to frame the issues around land access for young and beginning farmers in Western North Carolina and kind of give you a glimpse into what it's like for those people who have a passion to be a part of the local food system but are having a lot of trouble getting started. Um, and throughout the presentation I'll be referring to young farmers, but I'm not using that to refer to people of a certain age, not just teenagers or people in their 20s, but people who are new to farming, rather. So you can be young and sort of green at what you're doing. Um, so just to clarify. So we all know that making a living farming is tough. It's the fourth most dangerous job. Um, you're completely dependent on the weather. Your products are highly perishable, and you don't get days off, unless you're really lucky. Um, and farming, so it's already an inherently risky business, but with soaring costs for gas and supplies, falling prices for farm products, and the growing dominance of large farm enterprises, as John Swan was touching on, um, owning and operating a family farm is getting more and more difficult. Um, we know that farmers are aging. The average age of farmers in the U.S. is 57, and for every one farmer that's under the age of 35, there are six over the age of 65. In the U.S., as well as in Western North Carolina, we are experiencing a rapid um, turnover in farmland ownership as well. Seventy percent of our nation's farmland will change hands over the next 20 years. And since these days, most farm kids choose not to carry on the farm business. As farmers retire and pass on, their land is likely to transition out of family ownership and management forever. Um, I think we're all fairly familiar with this sort of narrative of doom and gloom in the agriculture industry, um, and I can see how it's hard to find the appeal um, to keep farming in an industry that seems to be dying in many ways. But I think all of these facts and figures do bring up important questions for us to consider. What is the future of farming? How can it be a viable livelihood? Um, and who will do it? But I, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and you probably already know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Um, across the country and right here in West North Carolina, we are witnessing an increasing number of people who want to farm and raise healthy food, and they are pursuing or considering careers in agriculture. This simple dream of doing work you're passionate about, providing for your family, and contributing positively to the community is, I think, a desire that many of us can relate to on some level. Um, and this new generation really sees that opportunity in farming. And that's really exciting. Um, so by raising food locally for local markets, they are creating an alternative to our global food supply chain and fostering connections between food, farms, and community. And I see this, I see these new and aspiring farmers in my other job, one of my other hats that I wear, with the Organic Growers School, where I'm the Farmer Programs Coordinator. Um, and I organize a farmer network called CRAFT, which stands for a Collaborative Regional Alliance for Farmer Training. And it's a um, collaborative effort to bring together experienced farmers, beginning farmers, and farm apprentices in a comprehensive training program in sustainable agriculture. Um, and so, for instance, in 2013, we had 40 farm members in our CRAFT program. 14 of those farms have been in operation for less than five years. And then collectively, 21 of those farms hired and trained 66 apprentices on their farms. Um, and with WNC Farm Link, we are currently working with 31 people who are looking for land to farm here in Western North Carolina. Um, so there's a supply of farmers. We just have to figure out how to make their um, ability to farm a little bit 
easier. So this new generation of farmers comes from all walks of life. Returning veterans, second career seekers, and college grads are just some of the folks that are looking for meaningful employment and exploring what agriculture has to offer. Um, more and more of them are young women, which I think is really exciting. Um, many are embracing sustainable growing practices where diversity is their crop insurance and not a government subsidy. Um, they have diversity in what they produce. They're growing dozens of different vegetable and fruit crops from asparagus to winter squash. They're raising livestock on grass. They're making bread, cheese, pickles, and honey, and lots of other value-added products of, from what they grow. Um, often they have diversity within marketing too and are often doing their own marketing, selling directly to customers through tailgate markets, CSAs, or community-supported community agriculture food boxes, um, roadside stands, and local restaurants. And they're really thinking creatively about farm and business structures, working together and sharing their expertise with other aspiring farmers. Um, so this place-based approach this shift to caring for the land and community in new ways really promises a more diverse and secure food system that is resilient to the changes in the weather and the climate, um, less energy dependent, invigorates rural economies and produces a healthy food supply, and also helps maintain the rural character and traditions of West North Carolina that Mrs. Anderson talked about earlier. And while there is a growing interest in local foods in our region and stronger markets for local farm products, a bustling farm stand will not guarantee a farm success. Um, for farmers, access to financing as well as secure and suitable land are just as critical. As beginning farmers set out to start their own farm businesses, they are faced not only with daunting startup co costs like um, buying equipment, buying tools, seeds, livestock, coolers, on and on and on. Um, the price of farmland is priced many times beyond what they can afford, and few lenders are really willing to take a risk on these young and new farmers. Um, the agricultural use value and the real estate value of land have really never been more polarized. Um, and in other words, I guess, land is priced for what can be built on it rather than what it can produce and grow. Um, much of our region's farmland, especially oopsie, especially those tracks um, closer to Asheville and our larger markets, um, that farmland is evaluated for its development appeal and potential for second homes instead of its capacity for growing fruits, vegetables, or raising livestock. Um, and as a consequence, the price of farmland is far greater than what this new generation of farmers can possibly afford, and active farms and acres of valuable farmland are being taken out of production forever as they're sold for development and rural estates. Um, and just kind of thinking about the externalities of these decisions, this decision-making process seems really counterintuitive since the natural and rural character of our region is why so many of us choose to live here, why so many tourists come here every year, and in many ways, what drives our local economy. Um, so I just have two quick examples of some farmers who are struggling with um, land access. So here we have Joe Evans. He's with Paper Crane Farm. He, for a few years, worked on um, or apprenticed on different farms in the area and then has ventured into running his own farm. And over the past four years, he's been on three different farm properties and hopes to stay on the one he is currently farming in Mars Hill. Um, but as you can see from this quote, he doesn't really see how he'll ever be able to buy land in our area because the prices are so high. Oh, sure. He says, and this is a quote from an article in the Mountain Express. He says, I just don't see myself being able to buy land. What farmland there is, it's very, very expensive. If you're not independently wealthy or not inheriting family land, how do you come about finding a farm? And then we have Ten Mile Farm, and some of you may be familiar with Kevin Toomey and Christina Carter. They've also had their story out um, a bit in the papers. And they have been farming successfully in the region for eight years, but just this past season they lost their leases on the two tracts of land in Candler where they were farming, and currently have nowhere to grow this year because they haven't been able to find any land that they can afford. Um, and in her quote, you can see, or she says, we aren't starting a farm, we're succeeding at farming, and we want to do more. We want to stay here, and to do that, we need some soil to call our own. 
but you know, this year they're not growing. So for both of these farms, not having land security is a huge risk. Losing your land can be a huge setback for vegetable growers and livestock growers who really need years to build soil fertility, improve pasture, and add infrastructure. Um, so of course, owning land is not the only option for young farmers. Long-term leases can allow farmers the ability to invest in the soil and the farm um, and in the same piece of land over many years, but these arrangements can be really hard to find. Um, typically, new farmers find greater success renting land in the beginning, but with very little negotiating power um, when they're hashing out their rental terms, they end up having um, renting land with unwritten leases or at best a one-year lease. And in addition, farmers have been told or they don't believe that they can qualify for a mortgage. Lenders often lack understanding of um, farming practices and have conflicting definitions of a solid business model, especially when you're doing more innovative things. They don't really, they can't put that in their neat little boxes. Um, and what credit is available through the Farmland Services Agency through the USDA is limited and can take months to be approved. So if you have a property, you're ready to move on. If you can't get all your credit in order through the farm services, the landowner could easily sell it to someone else. Um, and furthermore, banks are reluctant to offer credit or loans for startup or expansion costs when young farmers often don't have assets like a home for collateral. And then if they're renting land, the farmer must convince the lender that they will remain on the same land long enough to see return on their investment. So farming today, against the odds, takes courage and perseverance, dedication and time, but few who start and aspire will be able to succeed without our help. The success of young farmers and our region are intertwined. We all must share the responsibility to help carve a path to success for young people who are building new farm businesses in Western North Carolina. And there are already things happening. Um, in response to the challenges that farmers are facing, Several organizations have joined forces creating WNC FarmLink, who I represent. Um, combined funding from the USDA, from the Land of Sky Regional Council, and the Communities Foundation of West North Carolina is supporting a half-time position that's dedicated to the mission of facilitating successful relationships between farmers looking for land to farm and landowners aspiring to keep their farm and forest land in agriculture. And we're serving all 23 counties. so all the westernmost counties in um, North Carolina. And we are maintaining a list of people looking for farm ownership or lease opportunities and people with land available and helping to um, negotiate and facilitate introductions and matching. Um, we're pushing for creative ways to keep farmland affordable for working farmers and land stewards and doing what we can to connect farmers with access to capital, knowledge, and the skills that they need to establish viable land use agreements and sustainable farm operations. Another project um, that is exciting is the Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy's new farm incubator program in Alexander, North Carolina. Um, so uh, this farmland was donated to the Conservancy and they will be hosting a small scale incubator to provide beginning farmers with temporary access to land, equipment, and infrastructure at reduced rates and help train them for successful farm management and ownership. And it's the first of its kind in our region, in our part of Western North Carolina. There is one up around Boone called Fig. But it'll take more to grow successful young farmers in West North Carolina, and we can work together to solve a lot of these problems. Um, of course, we need some of you to be farmers yourselves and be willing to think creatively about how land use and farm business models can work. If you own farmland or have influence in how land is used, we need some of you to sell or rent your land to a young or beginning farmer and be open to allowing those farmers to stay long term and build equity in the farm. Um, and as we heard from Ron's history of the farm, the Coggins um, farm was actually served as sort of an informal farm incubator and um, several farms, Gaining Ground Farm, Blue Ribbon Farm, and Full Sun Farm got their start there and they all now own their own land and are successfully farming and are models for um, local organic food, not necessarily certified, in our region. 
Um, but if you don't own land, but you belong to a church or an office building or a school campus that owns land that could be used for local food production, we need you to raise the possibility and the conversation of making it available for people who want to farm. We, and of course, we need all of you to buy and eat the food that local farmers grow. Join a CSA, support your local young farmers at, by shopping with them at the farmer's market, um, ask for it at local restaurants and grocery stores. And we need all of you to use your civic power at the state and community level, calling on public and private funders to encourage apprenticeship programs, promote affordability protections and tax incentives for protecting farmland, and policies that encourage landowners to transfer land to new and beginning farmers. So we are in a new age of farming, and it's exciting. Um, I hope that you'll see agriculture in Western North Carolina with new eyes, seeing the innovative ways that young farmers are creating new pathways for farming and adding incalculable value, value to our community. We all have the ability to support beginning farmers and together we can grow a future with farmers right here in Western North Carolina and I hope you'll join us. Thank you.